This podcast is a production of Widener Law Commonwealth in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. For more information, visit commonwealthlaw.widener.edu slash podcast. Now here's your host, Julie Massing. Welcome to Widener Law Commonwealth's podcast. Today we're going to talk with Karen Durkin. She is the director of our Career Development and Externships office. She's been in that position for about 14 years. Welcome. Morning. Um, So I'm going to start off with the question of, can you just give us the basic overview of what the Career Development Office does and what it offers for students? Um, The Career Development Office, Julie, offers a variety of services, not just for students, but for the alums as well. Uh, We do services such as uh, cover letters, resumes, obviously. Uh, We work with students and grads in terms of interviewing skills, uh, networking opportunities, Um, We certainly help them on a regular basis with their job search. Um, In addition, we offer uh, programming throughout the year, both uh, during the the day as well as in the evening, uh, so we can accommodate the extended division students as well. Um, There are on-campus recruitment opportunities as well as off-campus opportunities. When should a student get involved? Should they start getting involved with your office before they even, you know, come in or should they start when they're, you know, um, when they're first starting out, when they first come in for their first week or should they start, you know, when there are two or three L? When's the best time for them to get involved with the Career Development Office? Well, there are some guidelines in place which we follow with respect to our first year students. Um, Generally speaking, the first year students should come to see us after October 15th of of their first year. Um, And the idea being that we'd like them to get settled into school and get comfortable in their schedules before they start um, spending their time in terms of job searches and and the like. Now, the evening students, um, we suggest that they come to see us sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. We understand that many of them have uh, commitments in so far as full-time jobs and families and and the like, uh, and they may not feel as though they need career services Um, but we would like to encourage them to come in as soon as possible, and I'm happy to see them on an individual basis well before October 15th if if they have the time and the desire to do so. Okay. Now, um, previously you talked a little bit about interviewing skills um, and professionalism skills. Can you kind of walk me through maybe how you help a student with their resume or with an interview? Like, what sort of skills are you teaching them when you sit down with them? Well, I think I think the resume almost speaks to itself. Um, some of the students may find it to be um, the resume a little bit different in terms of um, the resume for the legal profession. Uh, many of them come to school, and I believe in the application process, they actually provide us with a resume that they've done at the college level. Um, but when they come to law school, uh, legal employers are looking for a resume that looks a little bit different than what they've probably been used to in the past. So we certainly want to help them with formatting to make sure that um, their resume gets considered as it should. Um, and it, it just it's just a matter of formatting for the most part. Um, okay. And we you know we certainly have we we have a page online and they can certainly look at samples online. But but the other thing they should really be careful about is having another set of eyes look over a resume or a cover letter mm-hmm. uh, to make sure that there are no silly mistakes and you know maybe maybe typographical errors and and whatnot. Um, but I, I would like to talk a little bit about the interviewing process, sure, um, yes. if, if you don't mind. Because one thing we do offer on a regular basis is um, an opportunity to do mock interviews. Um, the, the interview process varies considerably from job to job. So, for example, a student who would be interviewing at a, um, a large law firm would have a very different experience than a student who is interviewing at a district attorney's office, for example. So I would strongly encourage students to contact us, and I'm happy to do a mock interview with them, Mm -hmm. Um, or, as I've done in the past, I've um, enlisted folks from the legal community to come in and do mock interviews. But but clearly, um, they shouldn't be surprised when they go into an interview 
uh, in so far as what they're going to face. Do you find that those students who utilize that opportunity to have those mock interviews, interviews have a higher success rate of placement when they take advantage of those professionalism skills that you're offering in your office? Uh, yes, definitely. And in fact, they get back to me and they tell me that oftentimes my mock interview is a little bit harder than the interview they actually had in order to get the job. That's awesome. Um, now, uh, you also talked a little bit about some of the other programming. So Lunch and, lunch and Learns, mentoring, reaching out to other individuals, other alum, other uh, alumni uh, in the area. What can you, can you kind of tell me about that? Well, actually, um, it's probably been two or three years now. We changed the, the structure and the format of our uh, workshops and programming. Um, what we had been finding in years past, we would do programming actually in this building in one of the classrooms and have lunch, pizzas and sandwiches and the like for students and bring in guest speakers. And for some reason, the students really didn't um, didn't participate as we expected they would. Mm -hmm. So we've moved the format to a little bit of a more intimate um, atmosphere and we've moved it actually into my office and um, it seems to be working out much better for some reason. Um, I, I don't know if the students like the, the fact that it's a, a smaller room and they, they get to really sit next to the, the speaker mm -hmm. or the attorney who's presenting, um, but they seem to enjoy that more and they seem to be more comfortable with the speaker uh, in that setting. So that's what we've been doing, as I say. I think it's been the last two or three years, and we expect to continue that again. Um, now, for the evening students, I try to do some programming at 5 in the evening because I know they have class at 6. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we try to um, put on the programming for the extended division students in the evening at 5. Um, and I, every year I ask students if there's a particular topic you'd like us to address or a particular speaker you would like us to contact and have that speaker come in, I'm more than happy to do that. So I try to, um, uh, I try to reach out to them and bring in the, the folks that they would like to hear from. Do you find that there's a good response from alumni? Do, do you typically try to get alumni to come back to speak to the students, or, or is it kind of a, um, a mix of, of those in the community and then also some of the, of the alumni? Um, it would depend on what the topic might be, but okay. I, do, I do really enjoy engaging with the alumni, and I think it's, it's good for the students to see uh, where, where, the, gone. where the where the alumni have gone and what they're doing, and it's also it's also fun I think for the students to um, to hear from the alums you know and, and get some pick their brains and to find out um, oh gee maybe I should be um, preparing my outlines a little earlier than I expected mm -hmm. and take some advice from the alums in that regard as well. But um, there have been um, occasions throughout the year where depending upon what the topic is that um, we would have just a member of the legal community come in and, and uh, have lunch with the students. Okay. Um, now let's talk a little bit about internships. Um, when and how are students eligible for internships, and do they come to your office to learn about those opportunities? Well, we actually do a session every every year, um, sometimes twice a year, about opportunities such as that, externships and internships, um, because there is a process, especially when it comes um, to externships in terms of receiving credit. Mm -hmm. So I do, even though certainly that information is available online, and um, certainly it's available through my office and the registrar's office. But I do like to walk them through the process, especially when it comes um, it comes down to getting credits mm -hmm. and what the requirements are. Um, generally speaking, in terms of students working, um, most employers do uh, prefer students to have had uh, professional responsibility uh, and to have successfully completed that. And what is professional responsibility? Can you tell us? Well, professional responsibility is a class that um, all law students take. Um, and, and generally, uh, students can take that their first summer or their second year of school um, to address sort of the do's and don'ts of, of how we practice law and, and uh, how we treat clients and the courts and the like. Um, but generally speaking, employers are looking for students to have that. So that means, in, in terms of answering your question, that in terms of going out into the workforce, it's usually that first summer uh, when students would be most likely to, to be working in the workforce. Okay. 
Um, and would a student typically return to an internship on multiple summers? Or would they typically do one internship and then move to another on maybe their 2L or 3L year? Well, that depends on the circumstance and depends on the student and it certainly depends on the employer. Um, if, for example, a student went to a large firm in his or her first summer, um, the hope would be that the student would be invited back for the following year. Uh, meaning that the employer was satisfied with the student, the student enjoyed the experience, and they would go back for their for their second summer. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, it may be that a student uh, does um, a placement in the summer and decides that, gee whiz, that's not really what I'd like to do. Um, I really thought I'd want to be in the courtroom every day, and I really don't think the district attorney's office is for me. And so then they would say, gee, do you have any other suggestions or um, any other opportunities that might fit my interest? And I, maybe I would find the situation be a little better suited to who I am. And so we'd work with that student in that regard. So it's, it's not a hard and fast rule. Mm -hmm. um, you know, oftentimes students, and I'll use the district attorney's office as an example, oftentimes students, their goal is to work at the district attorney's office upon graduation um, and so they would stay um, maybe two or three semesters with that district attorney's office in the hopes of getting an offer um, at the end of that final semester. It is very rare for students to be hired um, in for, upon graduation uh, without having worked for an employer. Okay. Now, do you find there's a little bit of magic in placing this the right student with the right internship or externship? I would imagine that sometimes you have to steer them into, they may be really wanting to do something, but you see that maybe they have strengths in some different areas. And do you ever have to sort of talk to them and say, hey, well, why don't we try this? I have this opening here that, that may be a good fit for you. Um, yes, I don't actually place them. Okay. Um, the process is that I would advise them and give them guidance um, based on what I know of them, what they tell me their interests are, um, their, their skills, and what the needs are of the employer. Um, but certainly I would, I would definitely say that some, some placements um, are better suited for students than other places, right. depending upon their interest and their skills. Okay. Um, and now, are the services that you offer, are they free? Or, oh, or are they, they Okay, so mm -hmm. students are able to, and, and alumni are able to come and use these services for free anytime. A absolutely, and in terms of, um, oftentimes employers will have uh, Kelly and I uh, collect the, the application materials, and um, some employers, believe it or not, still have us FedEx them mm -hmm. over to the office, or some just ask us to send them electronically we, when all of that is available to the students. For and just free. for clarification, Kelly is, is your assistant. She's oh, your yes, right hand. Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, and now, why should a student use the services and programs available through the CDO, through your office? Uh, you know, what advantages would it provide them during law school? I mean, what? I mean, I I would imagine that the sky is kind of the limit there. Well. Um, they should be aware of the fact that the, the profession is changing. It's changing pretty quickly. It's changing in so far as employer needs, and it's, it's, really, um, it, it's really much different than, than it was maybe 10 years ago even. And very different from um, the TV shows that, that oh, we very, see. Very, <laughs> yes, very, very different from the television shows or the movies that they, they may have watched. Um, and... Because of the market the way it is, I think it would be, it would behoove them to come in, make themselves known, shoot us an email, give us a call, find out what's going on. Now, for example, yesterday I was just in Philadelphia for a meeting with um, the federal government hiring group um, to tell us what the changes are, um, what they're looking for now in terms of resumes, what they're looking for in terms of skill set um, that they were not doing um, maybe five years ago. So, um, you know, we, tr we try to stay connected to the community so we, we know what's going on both regionally. You know, we, we are considered part of the Philadelphia region, so um, I routinely meet in Philadelphia with the law firms and with other schools to find out what's going on in that market. But nationally, too, um, we are connected um, so we have some sense of 
what changes are going on in the mm-hmm. market across the country. So I would imagine also like tied into that is the importance of professionalism, which we talked a little bit about, but also your dress, your conduct, networking. Um, these, I would imagine, are also some pillars of success that you touch upon with the students when they come into your office. Absolutely. Um, believe it or not, in most uh, placements, there still is a dress code. <laughs> um, and I know some students may find that shocking or um, not as they had hoped, but that is true, that still in many, many um, placements there is a dress code, and the students should be well aware of that. Um, but in terms of professionalism, every office is a little bit different in terms of how relaxed it is or um, or perhaps not, um, but they need to be aware of these these differences in the offices. Well, though, that kind of wraps up the questions that I had for you, except for one last one. I always have one fun question that I like to ask at the end. Um, And that question for you is, what is the best piece of advice that you were given in law school that you've carried with you? What what has stayed with you um, to help in your success in your career? Uh, I would say I was told early on, and and I think it is still true, that um, students should guard their reputations. Um, believe it or not, it is a very small legal community, and mm-hmm. it's very important that um, the students um, be mindful of their conduct um, all the time, uh, whether they be in the job, on the job, or whether they be um, you know, off hours and at the grocery store. I think it's really important um, for the students to maintain their reputation. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, And thanks to our listeners. Uh, Please stay tuned for our next podcast. And we will catch you next time. Widener University Commonwealth Law School is the Pennsylvania capital's only law school. With three specialized centers of legal scholarship through its Law and Government Institute, Environmental Law and Sustainability Center, and Business Advising Program, Widener Law Commonwealth offers an exceptional learning experience that is personal, practical, and professional. Visit commonwealthlaw.widener.edu for more information.